Italy has one of the world's most iconic food scenes, with Rome being an epicenter for some great eats. In this food tour, we're going to walk through some of the most iconic and delicious foods you need to try when visiting Rome. For the first spot on our food tour, we visited Rome's Trastevere neighborhood, which is famous for its picturesque streets lined with romantic restaurants. We grabbed an outdoor seat at the Atello restaurant and ordered two of Rome's most iconic dishes. So we just got our order here. We both ordered pasta dishes and man, are we excited. We ordered the Kecko e Pepe and then also the Carbonara. And he was really excited whenever we ordered the Kecko e Pepe. So we know that it has to be pretty good. So I'm very excited. This is my first uh, bite of Italian pasta ever. And you can tell that the noodles are so thick and homemade. It looks amazing. Oh my goodness. That might be one of my favorite bites ever. This dish is very peppery, so there's that little bit of spice in there, but the pasta is thick. Those noodles are unlike anything I've tasted before. And there's a delicious, delicious sauce on it, as well as Parmesan cheese. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm so excited. And I'm so excited to try this. I got carbonara de jamón. There's actually cheese and egg in here and little bites of bacon, and it looks unbelievable. I'm going for my first bite. It looks like they put shredded Parmesan cheese on there, and this looks unreal. It's so creamy and tender, and there's no substitute for fresh pasta. You just can't get this flavor out of the box. This is one of the best noodles I've ever tasted, and the sauce, so creamy, so cheesy. That's great sauce. So one more thing is we're working through these dishes. We're realizing the pasta is really the star of the show. They're so fluffy and chewy. The sauce is incredible, too, but man, freshly made pasta, there's nothing else like it. Nothing else like it. And to wash this all down, we got ourselves an April spritz here. Now, either of us have ever had one of these before, but they look like they're pretty popular in Italy. I believe it's some bitters, which is the April. It's got club soda in there, and I believe Prosecco to give it a little bit of a sweet punch. So we're really excited to try this. It's a beautifully presented cocktail. Mm. It's really bright and light, almost like a refreshing drink. It's got this orange and florally taste to it. Overall, a great refreshing cocktail on a warm night in Rome. So apparently there are four pastas that are famous in Rome, and we got two of them tonight. The Kecco e Pepe, which literally translates to cheese and pepper, and then also the Carbonara. So those are two of the four, and we're going to have to hit the other two before we leave Rome. And no trip to Rome is complete without devouring some amazing pizza. To get our fix, we headed to one of Rome's most interesting pizza places. Here, they have tons of fresh takeaway varieties with piled on toppings. So we just got pizza from Roscoli and man, these look absolutely delicious. The cool thing about this pizza place is they actually weigh your slice and that's how they charge you. Obviously we got some pretty heavy slices here, but it wasn't too bad. And we pretty much just pointed out the ones that we wanted at the counter. So the first slice we got is pesto over here. And then the other slice we have, it looks like it has tomatoes and mozzarella and I'm not really sure what else. There might be a drizzle of olive oil there, but we are hungry and we're really excited to try these out. So I'm gonna go in with the pesto slice here first. Michael and I absolutely love pesto. We actually make pesto pizza at home quite a bit, but obviously it does not look as delicious as this. I'm gonna go in. Oh my God. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. It's almost like if you were to make pizza on top of sourdough bread. And the pesto just tastes so incredibly fresh. I am definitely a thick crust pizza kind of person. There were options for thin crust in there, but I always opt for thick crust. This might be a controversial opinion, but I think the crust is the best part of a pizza. I am really happy right now. So the other slice of pizza we've got here seems to be a tomato mozzarella. I think there's a little pesto on there, but that might just because it brushed shoulders with our other slice of pizza. And this looks amazing. It has a pretty good weight to it. It's definitely fluffy, but it is dense. So I am so excited for this first bite here. You hate to see it when a piece of mozzarella goes, but man, that is fresh mozzarella. I think what steals the show of this pizza is the bread. It is so fluffy and airy and it pairs so well with all the toppings. And what's so great about where we're eating this pizza, we walked over to the park, which is about two blocks away, and there's a running water fountain behind us. Rome is covered in all these water fountains, so you can fill up your water bottles with great potable water to wash pizza down. If you're enjoying this video, do us a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button and check out some of our other Rome videos, like our top things to do in Rome and our upcoming Rome travel guide. The next step on our food tour takes us deep into the heart of Rome, to a piazza built on an ancient chariot racetrack that is now filled with fountains, restaurants, and iconic buildings. Here, we've tracked down the home 
one with the original Tartufo, a famous gelato variety comprised of two chocolatey flavors fused together at the restaurant Tre Scalini. We're currently in Piazza Novana and we're very excited because this is our first gelato of the day. So what we got here is from the Cafe Tre Scalini, which is right across from the Four Rivers Fountain in the middle of the piazza. We're really excited because apparently this flavor tartuffel is what they're known for. It was actually recommended to us by the Rick Steves audio guide. So you know it's gonna be good. Apparently it's a very rich chocolatey flavor. So we are so excited to try this out. So I'm going in with the first bite here. That is absolutely amazing. The gelato itself is chocolatey, but it isn't too overpowering. It's almost really light, which is perfect for a hot summer's day like today. And it's coated in kind of like a chocolate crusty turtle shell. That is absolutely amazing. And then the whipped cream is just the cherry on top. It adds a level of freshness to it. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. And we're gonna pause this video really quickly to do a shameless plug for our company. As you might have known, we started our own travel gear company. Behind me, I have some of our days of the week packing cube, which are designed to make packing outfits easy on the road. It can keep your kids organized, yourself organized, and we have two different sizes available. The small is great for children. The large right here can fit just about anything under the sun. We'll link our Amazon store in the description box below. We're jumping back to the video. And next up, we're going to one of the most iconic sandwich shops in all of Rome. Alentico and Venayo has expanded into two storefront street corners near the Pantheon. And while at midday, you can expect a line around the block. We went during a late morning on a Monday and only waited about 10 minutes. We wanted a Pantheon view, so we took our sandwiches to eat on the fountain steps of the Piazza della Rotunda. We just picked up a couple sandwiches from Al Altico Vinio. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation, but these sandwiches look amazing. So what I have here is thin cut beef and it's covered in the famous pistachio cream sauce this restaurant's known for. We're eating these sandwiches just outside the Pantheon, which is one of the most famous buildings in all of Rome. So I can't think of a better spot to eat these amazing looking sandwiches. I'm going for my first bite here. Mmm. The bread is incredible. A really fresh and crunchy focaccia. And the meat is just so tender. And the cream sauce on there really balances well with the heaviness of the bread. That's a delightful sandwich. So I also got a sandwich as well. I really don't think we needed to get two sandwiches. These are definitely big enough to share between two people, but I got the Tartufo one, which has some thinly cut salami on it, as well as rocket leaves. Excited to see what those are. I'm pretty sure it's just arugula, but I could be wrong. And then what I'm most excited for on this sandwich is truffle sauce and we were told you needed to try the cream of pistachio and the truffle sauce when you're here so very excited for that here we go oh my gosh that truffle sauce is absolutely amazing it really just melts in your mouth <laughs> got a bird here trying to take our food yeah i'm pretty sure the rocket leaves are arugula and man, that salami is so thinly cut. It really just melts in your mouth. That is amazing. Next on our food tour, we're grabbing a quick bite to try a takeaway version of one of Northern Italy's tastiest delicacies, gnocchi. So next up on the food tour, we stop at a takeaway pasta joint. This place is called Pasta Imperial. We saw several locals eating it and it looks amazing. They were actually making the pasta fresh inside the restaurant. So you know it's gonna be pretty darn good. We went with the gnocchi bolognese sauce. So there's fresh cut gnocchi dumpling noodles in there. And it's got this really red meat sauce on top that looks absolutely amazing. I can smell it from here. They added fresh grated Parmesan cheese on top and it's starting to melt there now. So it looks incredible. I'm going for my first bite now. Here goes. Mm. My goodness, that's probably the fluffiest, most tender gnocchi I've ever had. It pretty much just melts in your mouth. There's structure to it, but it's so soft. And the sauce on there adds a nice hardiness to it. I'm sure Italian pasta gets better than this, but I really can't see how. I think we saw there's a couple of these pasta imperiales around Rome. So I think it might be a slight chain, but I clearly see why, because this is so delicious. Definitely recommend this if you're looking for a quick bite of pasta. So Michael and I actually love the Trader Joe's gnocchi that just comes in the frozen package. That's kind of our go-to lazy meal. And we used to think that was a 10 out of 10 
Island. But man, this is making me rethink everything. Next on our food tour, we're heading back to the Trust Avery neighborhood to sample some delicious foods from one of the area's hottest restaurants, Tomorello. It's not uncommon for lines to wrap around the block of this restaurant in the evenings. So we got here early to grab a spot and try some amazing dishes. So we ordered a fried mix as our starter here at the restaurant. And what this comes with, we're not entirely sure, but we're pretty sure one of the fried balls in here is similar to Arancini. We've had it in DC before, but not Italy. So we're really excited. It's kind of just like a fried rice ball. And we were told in Rome, Arancini is typically just filled with cheese and they call it a supply. So we're really excited to dig into this. All right, here we go. Wow. That's amazing. I don't even really know what to compare it to, but you can definitely actually taste the rice in there and the cheese just kind of floods into your mouth. So I'm going to give these a whirl too. They look incredible and they're really warm to the touch. Mmm. So I just took a bite of a different variety here. This one's actually not fried cheese. It's actually fried dough stuffed with what seems to be just different kinds of rice and tomato sauce. It's actually really good. The texture is like what you'd expect with normal rice. So it's got, you know, a nice palate on the tongue. Almost like the consistency of what you'd expect from carnival food, but obviously a little bit fancier. But that's delicious. So we just polished off these assorted fried balls and we're realizing that they were so good. We didn't stop to take any video of what they actually look like on the inside. So you'll have to trust us that they were amazing. That's the universal sign of a good dish. So here we have the carbonara at Tom. Norello, this seems to be the most famous dish, so we're really excited to try it. The last spot we had carbonara in Rome actually used rigatoni noodles, and here they use more of a spaghetti noodle, which I'm assuming is a little bit more traditional. It also looks like we have heaping slices of bacon in here, so we're really excited about that, and it looks super creamy, and obviously the presentation is amazing in this pan. <laughs> mm. Wow. You can really taste the egg in that sauce and it really just coats each individual noodle so well. Oh my gosh. This is a lot of food, but I have a feeling we're gonna finish it all. So I went with another classic Italian dish. This is meatballs, I believe spinach and potatoes. And right off the bat, you can tell the presentation is beautiful. I think it kind of looks like the Italian flag. I don't know if that's intentional or just a beautiful looking dish, but it looks really good. And I'm really excited to dive into this. All right, I'm gonna dive into my first bite of meatball here. Already it's so tender to cut and the sauce has a nice oil base to it. Looks really good. That's amazing. It's so moist and I feel like when my mom used to make meatballs, it was really dry and with big breadcrumbs. And this is just such a cohesive bite. That's a really good meatball. It's not spicy, but it's still just looking at these things. I have that Jim Carrey quote in my head going, That's a spicy meatball! Um, even though that's definitely not the case with these ones. I'm gonna migrate over here to a potato bite though. Mm. Very good potatoes. You can definitely tell it's still a potato. You don't lose too much of that flavor when it becomes like a French fry or a chip. It still tastes that good earthy potato-ness to it, if potato-ness is even a word. I'm gonna try now some of these greens here, which I believe are spinach. Not entirely sure though. That's really good. It's definitely a little spicy. Might even be the spiciest spinach I've ever tasted, but really nice. We've really been missing vegetables in Italy. I feel like a lot of these dishes are very pasta heavy, sauce heavy, and you know, meat heavy. And we haven't really seen many vegetables in the place. So even though it's a little spicy, I'm really glad to have this here. So this restaurant tends to get pretty busy, but what's a lesser known fact is there's actually the same restaurant a couple blocks over from the one that most people go to. So we'll pop the addresses in the description below so you know which one you have a better chance of getting a table at. Back in Trust Savory, we wanted to try one of the highest rate gelatos in the area. So we headed to Gelateria de Viati. So we are walking the streets of a Trustavery right now. We are absolutely loving this neighborhood. We picked an Airbnb pretty close to here. And this seems like the place to be for shops, restaurants, and most importantly, gelato. So what we have here is a coffee gelato. We got the medium size. And truth be told, we dug into it already because it was melting in this hot Italian sun. But man, is this amazing. It is perfectly creamy and super refreshing. And we need to go to this place because it had 4.8 stars on Google. So pretty good. I'm gonna dive in a little bit more just because it's melting here. Oh my gosh, that is so refreshing on this hot summer's day. We're gonna have to eat quick. <laughs> Next up, we're heading to one of the most unique spots we found in Rome to grab a drink, La Botticella. 
So we're by the Piazza Navona right now, and we just stumbled into what looks to be a Steelers bar. Probably the only Steelers bar in Rome, let alone Italy. This place feels like you're stepping right back into America. There's pennants of all the universities here. Tons and tons of Steelers gear. I think Jesus over there even has a Steelers helmet on, kind of like the Immaculate Reception. With country music playing, I can't think of a better slice of Americana in the center of Rome. If you're a Steelers fan, you have to check this place out. Cheers. We had the best time eating our way through Rome and highly recommend all of these stops we had in our food tour. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. We have a couple other videos coming up that you don't want to miss. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.